today we're going to be doing a sew along of my very first men's pattern for simplicity. We're going to be working on this classic button up shirt. Now if you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher course, click the link in the description box below. Watch that video where I talk about choosing your size, cutting your pattern, and a whole lot of helpful tips and then come back and sew along with me. So we're really excited about the first Mimi G men's pattern for simplicity and Norris here did a really great job helping design it. So I'm gonna let him walk you through the sew along. All right, everybody, let's get started. So you have two options when it comes to the collar and the cuffs. I'm gonna be doing the widespread collar and the one with the regular cuffs. If you turn to the back, you'll find what fabric choice um, to make the shirt out of and also notions, your hard goods, buttons, etc and also the number of yardage that you need according to your body size. So here are the pattern pieces we're gonna be using. Pattern piece number five, which is the yoke back. We're gonna be cutting two out of fabric. Pattern piece number one, which is the front. We will we'll be cutting two out of fabric. Pattern piece number three, which is the back. We'll be cutting one on the fold out of fabric. Pattern piece number nine, which is the sleeve. We're gonna be cutting two out of fabric. Pattern piece number six, which is the neck band. We'll be cutting two out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number eight, which is the pointed collar. We'll be cutting two out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number two, which is the pocket, we'll be cutting one out of fabric. Pattern piece number 12, which is the barrel cuff, and this will be cut out of four out of fabric and two out of interfacing. And then we have pattern piece number 10, which is the placket, you'll be cutting two out of fabric. And just this little piece here, you're going to cut it out of interfacing. And then you have the buttonhole guide. You don't need to cut out this out of fabric or interfacing. It's simply a guide to tell you how to place your buttons in your buttonholes. Okay, now that you have all your patterns cut out of fabric and interface, let's get ready to sew. Okay, so we're gonna take the front piece and we're gonna fold along the fold line. So we're gonna fold once here and press, and then fold one more time and then press again. And we're gonna stitch close to the edge all the way down. And we're gonna do this for both sides. Be sure to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. Backstitch at the end. You want to do your other front the same exact way. Okay, so after you stitch both edges down, you want to press so your fabric can lay flat. And we're going to put this to the side just a moment. We're going to come right back to it. And we're going to start working on the pocket. So what you want to do is you want to fold down the top of the pocket where the fold line is. And you want to press. And then we're going to fold up a quarter of an inch on the very edge of it and we're going to press that and then we're going to stitch all the way around the pocket five eighths of an inch okay once you stitch all the way around the pocket you want to take your corners and fold them like this and if you have a point turner just use it just to get your corners all the way out like this So you want to press around your stitching and you want to stitch down the back of your pocket. So once you're done stitching across your pocket and pressing along your stitching, it should look just like this on the inside and like this on the front side. So now we're going to take our left front and you should have placed your markings here on your shirt and 
just where these two dots are, you're going to place your pocket right in between those dots. And we're going to pin. I'm going to put one more here at the bottom just to keep it in place. So we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch right along the edge all the way around, not at the top. So you're going to place your needle close to the edge and remember to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Back stitch at the end. And now you have placed your pocket onto your left side of your front. Now take this to the ironing board and press it. Okay, so once you have your pocket placed onto your shirt, we're gonna work on the pleat in the back. So I put little snips where the pleats are. So you simply fold over towards the outsides where those markings meet and you want to do that for the other side and then you take this over to the sewing machine and stitch it right across the top so I'm going to stitch this down using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance just to hold the pleat down back stitch stitch at the end. And now we have the pleat. So next step is to add the loop. I'm personally not going to be adding the loop on this shirt because it's more for a casual style for my personal preference. But if you want to use the belt loop, it's going to be pattern piece number four. And you're going to follow step seven through ten. So next we're going to sandwich the back in between the back facing and the back yoke. And we're going to line the notches up and pin. So pin at the notches first. Here. Then one here. Once you have it pinned, we're going to stitch using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way down. So using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, we're going to back stitch at the beginning. Back stitch at the end. Okay, after you get done stitching, you want to press the yoke back up, leaving the yoke back facing down. And with right sides facing, you want to take the back and match up your shoulders with your front pieces. So pin at your notches. pin the other side. So after you pin it, we want to turn it over and we are going to roll up the back along with the front pieces all the way up just like this and we're going to bring the yoke up 
and pin them all three together. Okay, so we're gonna head to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch across both shoulders using the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and remember not to catch your front and back that's underneath rolled up. Okay, so once you stitch down your shoulders, we're gonna turn your shirt out to the right side. Okay, so now that our yoke is in place, you can choose to top stitch along your shoulders and along the back. So if I finish top stitching my shoulders down and along the bottom of my yoke, I'm gonna take my inner face neckband and with right sides facing, pin it to my neckline. And we're gonna match up our notches and pin there first. And be sure to have your neckband extend about 3 eighths of an inch from your shirt. Okay, so now that we have a pin, we're gonna stitch 3 eighths of an inch all the way across. Remember, we're extending the neck band 3 eighths of an inch, so we're gonna start 3 eighths of an inch down. Backstitch at the beginning at the end, and we're using a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the end. Okay, now that we have the neck band attached and we press our seam allowance up, let's put this to the sides and we're going to work with our collar. So, with right sides facing, we're going to pin along the unnotched side and we're going to stitch three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now let's head over to the sewing machine. So using the three eighths of an inch seam allowance we're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Pivot. Fax is at the end. Okay, now that we stitched all around the collar, we're gonna clip your corners. We're gonna turn them over. And you can use a point turner to get into the corners. So once you turn it over, you want to give it a good press and we're going to top stitch it 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, so once you have your collar top stitch, we're going to sandwich it inside of our band. So match up your notches. And begin to pin. Remember to line up your dots on your neck band too. So on the remaining neck band, you want to fold it up 3 8 of an inch and press it. 
and then we're going to stitch three eighth of an inch all the way around the neck band. Okay, we're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Back stitch at the end. So once we stitch the neck band, we're gonna cut curves just what a curve is. Right. The other side. Remember to not clip into your stitch. Okay, now we're going to turn this over. And we're going to pin down this opening. And we're going to stitch close to the edge all the way around. Okay, now that we have it pinned, just like I said, we're going to stitch very close to the edge all the way around. So I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to back stitch at the beginning. at the end okay once you finish pressing your collar and neck band we're gonna put this to the side and now we're gonna grab our sleeve and plaque it so you want to take the wrong side of your sleeve and place the right side of the plaque on it and then you want to match up your small dots at the top and at the bottom. And we're going to stitch along the stitching line up to the small dot across and back down to the end of your sleeve. And we're going to pin to keep it in place. Back stitch. stitch at the end okay now we're gonna clip down the center of the stitch line don't clip all the way you want to stop just before you get there and clip into the corners Okay, so now we're going to turn this into the right side of the sleeve. And we're going to give it a good press. Okay, so after you have your placket pressed down, you want to take this side here and fold over a quarter of an inch and press it down. And then we're going to fold over, creating an underlap like that. And we're going to stitch close to the edge. So let's pin. So, like I said, we're going to stitch close to the edge. Back stitch. Back stitch at the end. So 
So as you see, I took the remaining side and I fold over a quarter of an inch down the side, up here at the corners. And what we're gonna do is create the placket now. So just fold over. Pin it down in place. So once we have it pinned, we're going to stitch close to the edge, all the way up, down to this corner, and down the other side, and we're going to come down and stitch across our stitching line. Back stitch at the beginning. Back stitch at the end. Okay, so once you give your placket a good press, we're going to start on our pleats. So you want to take your solid lines and fold them onto the broken lines towards the placket. And you want to do the other one the same exact way. So they should look like this. And we're going to stitch down. Okay, so we've done our placket and we've done our pleats. So do the other sleeve the same exact way. Okay, now we're gonna insert our sleeve using the flat method. So what you wanna do is take your sleeve and you wanna place it right size facing. And first we're gonna line our notches up and pin. Double notch in the back. You have dots here in the center, so you want to line your dots up and pin. And then we have it all pinned. We're going to stitch using 5 8 of the inch seam allowance all the way across. Back stitch at the beginning. Back stitch at the end. Okay, we attached our sleeve, we pressed. So now we're gonna fold the shirt over into itself. We're gonna pin along the sleeve, under the arm, and down the body of the shirt. Pin your notches first. right there with that seam is that okay so now that I have this pin we're going to do a continuous seam down the arm down the underarm and along the body of the shirt and we're going to be using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to sew the other side the same exact way okay after you press your seams we're going to attach our cuff. So you want to grab the cuff that's interface and you want to align your notch and we're going to pin. There should be 5 eighths of an inch extended from both sides after you pin. Okay, so take this over to your sewing machine and you want to stitch it down 5 eighths inch seam allowance. Back stitch. Back stitch at the end.
Okay, now that we have the cuff attached to the sleeve, we're going to fold over a half inch to the nut side of your facing. And we're going to pin it to the cuff. With right sides facing, you're going to pin. Okay, so now that you have it pinned, we're going to stitch it down using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way down the side, across the top, and down the other side. Back stitch at the beginning. Back stitch at the end. Okay, so after we have it stitched together, I went ahead and trimmed down to about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to trim our corners. And we're going to fold the sleeve over. So we're going to get us a good press and then we're going to top stitch all the way around, closing in the bottom using quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so once you finish up your cuff, you want to do the other cuff the same exact way. And all you have left to do is the hem and the button holes and sewing your buttons on. Remember, you have the button guide for the placements of your buttons and for your button holes. And once you do that, you're all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that so long. Make sure and follow me at Mimi G Style and Norris at Norris Danta Ford, and we'll see you next time. Peace.